Hello and welcome to the server guide for DayZ. If any of this helps you, please leave a like and a subscribe. I'm an extremely small channel and it genuinely helps me so much. Whether beginning or returning, to get the full potential out of DayZ, you need to know how to use, navigate and pick what servers are best for you. I'll break it down into three sections. Information you probably need to know about the servers, including pros and cons of official vs community. How to use and navigate the servers, including joining modded servers and different maps. And then I'll end with what servers I think you should look for, as well as some additional information I think you should know. So, let's get into the video. Official vs Community so, the first thing you should know is the official servers are servers released and maintained by the developers, whereas the community servers are owned and run by the gamers. You can actually rent one yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested in doing that or for anyone who was just curious about the prices. But let's start with talking about the benefits and the negatives of using official servers. Firstly, if you create a character on an official server, you can move or swap over to another official server and keep that character and all the gear. This is great and useful for many reasons, because sometimes the population of a server can drop and if you want to engage more with other players or move to a more popular server or even meet some friends, you don't have to start with absolutely nothing. You can also use this to your advantage by finding more loot on lower populated servers and then switching over to higher populated servers where loot is scarce so you can engage in combat with a full stomach and a better weapon. However, but this ease of server swap does lead to an issue called ghosting. So what is ghosting? Oh god I hate this. So you have a guy trapped in a building, they can't get out without you shooting them, you've got all the exits covered, you're confident you have them. However, a minute later, they appear behind you and blow your brains all over the trees like Pebble Dash. Why is this? Well, essentially they've logged out of the server, joined another official server, changed positions and then rejoined only to flank you and, well, Pebble Dash. It's not too common, but one of the amazing things about DayZ is the potential for standoffs like this and it's just not really possible on official servers. Other issues include the poor loot economy in general. They have loot respawns, which I'll touch on more later, but it doesn't always do a good enough job and most times highly populated servers are almost completely empty. I know I just said you can switch between highly populated servers and hardly populated servers for loot, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't have to, to enjoy the game to its fullest. Also, it's harder to get in contact with admins on official servers, so if any issues do happen, and they do happen sometimes, you could be faced with being in a situation where you're probably just gonna have to let it go. This is annoying and don't get me wrong, you can find admins if you look hard enough online for official servers, but it can be a pain and it's not as easy as community. Though sometimes things happen where the admins can't help. Yeah, see, there's a zombie over there. now. I usually don't like shooting zombies, but there's only one, so I just want to get him out the way, and then I can focus. Easy. Two, three, four. He has friends. Getting scary. Ah, not good. Just get, no, stop it, stop, stop hitting me. How is this getting so bad? Oh. Run, 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 run. I just wanted to be left alone while I explored. Oh. Oh well. The base system. Oh, the base system. The base system is almost completely pointless on official servers. Don't waste your time. They are too weak. It does nothing to protect the loot you get. You're much safer finding a hole and burying something. Save the bases for community where it can take a hell of a lot to break into a base. Which is how it should be. But you'll probably get raided everywhere on every server eventually anyways. You just don't want the wolf blowing down your house on the first attempt. That's the basics of official, now onto community. Community servers can have way more loot and they don't allow you to ghost. If you switch to a new community server, you lose all progress so no one will be sneaking up behind you after logging out. But keep in mind they can still log out for like a minute or so, let you approach and then log back in in the same spot and then shoot you in the face. It's happened to me a couple of times, just throwing that out there. Community also have more seasoned players so the interactions are way better, especially considering it's an unwritten rule for most people to not kill new spots. Well, like 70% of the time, but in official servers there are so many people around the coast you can sometimes get killed before you even leave it. Plus, there are lots of rules on some community servers so you can usually find one to suit your needs. There are even a few where you're not allowed to loot bases or even kill another player. You're just there to survive and meet people. Whereas other servers can literally send texts to your real life phone if your base is being attacked. It's pretty diverse. The community servers also have mods that can add things from trading posts, new equipment, building or trading 
modern resources and even whole new maps such as Nemansk. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's an incredible map, though I don't recommend it for beginners at all. Avoid that until you can survive well on your own. It is very punishing and it takes a lot to survive. But there are other community built maps too outside of the Livonia DLC. Honestly, mods are an amazing addition here. It can even add currency and drugs. You can also get some cool alterations to community servers such as they can have longer or shorter day and night cycles, high food spawns or low food spawns. So if you're a player who dislikes or prefers one or the other, this should be a server to suit whatever needs and wants you have. One last positive here is sometimes your favorite YouTubers have their own servers you can play on too. So if there are any Daisy YouTubers you like, check out to see if they have one on the Discords or YouTube. Furthermore, when you join some servers, a Discord link will appear somewhere on the screen for a few moments. Very useful to look out for if you want to meet new players and contact admins about any issues you have. But although this all sounds great, it's not without its flaws too. As I said, you can only move players on official servers, you can't move players between community servers, so playing on a new one is always starting over again. This can be a negative if you want to try new servers, meet up with friends, or if the server gets closed down, which isn't really common on any well used community servers, so I wouldn't really worry about it, but just know it is a possibility, and servers with consistently few users probably won't last that long. Additionally, there can also be waiting lists for the best servers that take forever to get into so meeting up with friends isn't always as quick and easy as you'd like. Another problem is most of these servers can be empty or near an empty so getting a full adventure on a server you like isn't always as easy as you'd want either. Having a server with cool rules and settings is great but if nobody is on it, it can be a drag. Though it's also somewhat of a backhanded positive because it's only really a thing because there's so much choice available. Literally pages and pages of servers. Another arguable negative for beginners is you usually come up against long term players so winning them in a one on one fight can be way more difficult especially considering they're going to know a lot more tricks than you know this can be very frustrating for beginners and that's not to say that you won't lose battles on official because you will but it's a little bit more even because official have way more beginners than community and that's pretty much everything i think you should know about the pros and cons of official versus community I apologize if some of the explanations here are too simple but there are people who genuinely are starting from scratch so i'll try and include something for everyone Right, so, here we are in live view. This is the official DayZ launcher you all should see when you launch DayZ on PC. I'll make it bigger for you to see. So, firstly, click on servers. This will show all the servers available to you, which are separated by tabs at the top. Favorites, for example. I'll show you how to add to this in a moment. Recent. So previous servers you visited will be shown here. I've added a few just to give you a general idea of what it looks like. Friends. So any friends playing online, their servers should be displayed here so you can easily join them. But our main starting point is official. If you click this star, the server will show up in the favorites tab here. Now we can access it whenever we want. This indicates whether or not a password is required to enter this specific server. And as you can see, that is never really the case on official. This wrench icon indicates if any mods are present on the server. Again, on official, this is likely to be dark as there are no mods on official servers. This icon here indicates battle eye anti-cheat is active. You can mostly ignore this. This green icon usually indicates if your version of the game is compatible with this particular server. In most cases, it is. In certain countries, not so much. Now, the names used for official. They usually always start with DayZ, followed by either the word Livonia to indicate you need the DLC to play on this server, or the geographical code. This indicates where and likely who will be on the servers when you access them. I'll add the list of what each one means on the screen right now. In front of these letters, you will have a code. Each official server has a code you can share with your friends, or just remember and write down. But don't forget, you can just add them to favorites at any time. Some of these servers are first person only as indicated in the brackets. I'll talk more on them later. The word temporary may also be in brackets. Any official server labeled temporary are usually there when player numbers are high. This happens when updates roll out, sales go on, I think around the holidays, and basically any time the player count rises. But they adjust it according to how many people need them, so expect a few of those to disappear throughout the year. I'd avoid these unless absolutely necessary to use. Here, you have the map the server is based on. If you notice the get DLC button in purple, 
I'm using my second account right now, so I don't have the DLC installed here. I wanted to show you what it looked like before you join a map with DLC you don't have, either now or in the future. Whereas this doesn't happen on Chinaris, everybody gets Chinaris. You can also see the time of day and if you hover over it, you'll get a specific time as well as how fast time is going, how many players are in, how many players can be in and ping. For anyone not familiar with ping, you want the lowest for the best connection. You'll find that usually servers that are within your area have the best ping. Clicking on a server will also give you additional information such as this. The more details will usually always be empty on official because there are no mods added on official, but we will look into it now with community. So community, there are a lot more servers here and as you can see not all of them are as clearly labeled as official, but they're all still fairly simple to figure out based on what we know. This needs a password, this does not, this has mods, this does not, but a lot of the servers will detail what they have in them, for example high loot more food, no PvP, and so on. And if you want to find a specific one without crawling through hundreds, just type it into the search bar here. If you type in food, servers with the word food in the title will come up, and usually servers with higher food or loot will say so in the title. Usually you'll get like loot times five, which is obviously a significant increase in the amount of loot you should find on that specific server. Community servers want you to use them so their name is really a way for them to advertise. They're trying to attract you to get you to play on their server, which is why searching for specific words works so well. Oh, and you can also add community servers to favorites. Now say we want to play on a non-official map and some of them are incredible and definitely worth playing on. Pay attention to the map type. There are several community maps which won't be available on official and I'll show you how to access them in a moment. Say I wanted to play Nemansk, still butchering that word, or just access a Chinaris map with mods installed, or just wanted to see if I was interested in the server mods at all. Well, let's take a look. If we click on the server that interests us, we have all the normal information, as we did with the official, day, night and so on. But now we click on more details. Let's see what shows. A list of mods activated on this particular server. You can scroll through and see what's there, but if any of them don't seem interesting to you, just click close and look for another server. Alternatively, if you don't want to check out the mods that you have to download and you just want to join, just click join. Okay, but we want to access... The Malsk for the first time. So to get a clean entry, let's find the map here. Click on it, more details. Are we happy with the amount of mods we have to download and subscribe? Yes, we are. And for that clean entry, we're best clicking on set up DLCs and mods and join. Now we wait for them to download. This can take a while. Once it's finished downloading, just click join. Oh, and you won't have to do all this the next time. Most of the mods are similar to other servers as well, so once you've installed a few of the common ones, it should take far less time to access new modded servers. Again, this is my second account. Don't really have a lot added here. And that's it. As a beginner, what server should you choose? Official or community? Honestly, this is a much debated point within the Daisy community. Personally, I recommend the official servers to start off with. They're not without the flaws, but they do have their benefits. And the biggest one being they teach you the core gameplay. Once you can survive there, you can pretty much survive anywhere. Whereas going to a server with higher loot spawns and then transitioning to the normal servers might not teach you what you need to know and will probably slow the whole process down. It's much better to learn the skills you need to know and then adapt them to other servers rather than learning how to survive on one specific server and then starting from scratch on the next one which has proven to be way more difficult now. Plus the PvP is a little easier for new players as most new players tend to gravitate towards official servers. Eventually you'll build confidence and skills. Skills that you acquire over a long career. Skills that make you a nightmare for people like me. <laughs> but seriously, although I recommend you play on official, eventually you should then progress on to community, at least experimenting with them, because there are some great community servers, albeit way more difficult ones too, but official will learn you everything you need to know, and then you'll adapt quickly to most community servers. However, and this is very important to keep in mind, this is your game and it's your story. There is no point in playing on a server you are not enjoying forcing you to stop playing. There is definitely an 
argument to be made for starting on a less punishing server and working your way up. There is no server that is completely easy so it's entirely reasonable to avoid official altogether and find a random community one to start learning the game on. My recommendation of starting on an official server is just that, a recommendation and that worked for me. But we all have our own ways of learning so don't pay attention to anyone who tells you how you should play your game isn't a wrong way to enjoy it. You absolutely need to do what's best for you. And as for should you start out on Chinaris or the DLC map Livonia, there's not much difference but I'd definitely recommend as a beginner starting with Chinaris first. Livonia is a cool map but I'd recommend focusing on one map at a time when you first start because you really need to benefit from familiarising yourself with local resources and towns and the easiest map for that in my view is Chinaris. The maps are huge and if you're on PC there may be way better community maps that cost you nothing. Although I definitely wouldn't start off as a beginner on these maps, they're either way more difficult or just not designed for ease of access for beginners, I would definitely recommend them once you have a few dozen survival hours under your belt. They're extremely fun and present whole new challenges and adventures. Yeah, I could definitely do with a better knife to be honest. How many of you do I have to beat off? He says, really hoping to get that promotion at work few side notes. When a server is about to restart, you do usually get a warning, especially on official servers. They save one last time a few minutes before they restart, so anything you collect in them last few minutes will likely not be there when you return. A good note is, some people prefer to log out before the server restarts to make sure they keep all the gear. When it restarts, it will kick you to the main screen showing your character and then you can try to log back in in a minute or two. Bases will not be reset, neither will loot, but events such as helicopter crash sites may relocate and reset. The restarts are mostly to avoid glitches and improve performance of the server. Loot is reset on a system called Central Loot Economy or CLE, which means the server resets have little to no impact on overall loot spawns. However, it's a complicated little system they have so there are a few not worth mentioning exceptions to this rule, but overall everything should remain as it was, where it was before the server reset. Also keep in mind that a server wipe is not the same as a server restart, a server wipe will reset everything but they usually aren't common and you do get an announcement from the developers before this happens. There are third person and first person only servers. You can't cross your character on them so first person only characters can only go to first person only servers. Last note, official DayZ server maintenance and downtime occurs every Wednesday at 7am GMT. It usually lasts up to 3 hours but in my experience it's less than 2. But anyway, thanks for watching, please leave a like and a subscribe, I do see and appreciate every single one and it really does help me out. I'm a very small channel and although I love playing other games, I will always bring out new DayZ content whenever I can. Also, let me know what you think in the comments, do you agree with what I've said, do you disagree with what I've said, have I left something out, please let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.